all right. U.S. economy. Everybody says the U.S. economy is doing great. The U.S. economy is the best it's ever been. Maybe not that. But everyone talks about how the U.S. economy is doing right now. The U.S. economy has uh, job growth. The U.S. economy has less unemployment right now than it's had in a long time. Uh, I'm a nurse. I'm not an economist. So you know, maybe take what I say with a grain of salt. I am not an economist. However, you have very large name companies going out of business. For instance, one that's closing down, at least in my area, on Tuesday, maybe it's already closed down nationally, I don't know, Toys R Us or Babies R Us. They're closing down nationally, and at least in my area, Tuesday is the day that they completely shut the doors forever. I've been to a Toys R Us since they uh, announced the shutdown. I've talked to people that work there, and they say that they have been able to pick up jobs in other places. This is a great thing. This is great that they're able to pick up jobs in other places. However, their company shut down. They shouldn't have to be able to, you know, have to pick up jobs in other places. This was a large company. This company sponsored the birth of that draft thing that you saw all over YouTube like a year ago or so. Remember that draft thing? Yeah, Toys R Us sponsored that thing so that you could watch that thing for 24 hours. I don't know why they did it, but they did it. I hope that's not what sent them under. But anyways, back to my point. Why did they go under? They went under because they had borrowed too much money to pay back. In a nutshell, we'll say that. They had borrowed some money or, you know, needed assistance obtaining some money. And they couldn't get it all back. Their revenue just wasn't what they thought it was. The housing crash, the economic crisis, or whatever you want to call it, of 2008, revolved around roughly the same thing. So, are we on the very tip top of a bubble? been about 10 years now mm, I don't know uh, the economy kind of works in cycles it'll go up and it'll go down and it'll go up and it'll go down well we were on an upward trend there for a good little bit and people started borrowing money people, one thing people start borrowing money for is vehicles I've read plenty of articles about people borrowing money for vehicles I uh, love vehicles, any makes, any models. I like cars, I just do. And one news website, well, I'm gonna call it a news website, uh, that I read, it's entertainment also, is Jalopnik. Jalopnik has done articles on the bubble of the car economic crisis. I don't really think they call it the car economic crisis, but that's what I'm gonna call it just for simplicity reasons. Anyways, back to the point. What happens is people are borrowing money. It may be for a buy here, pay here. Typically it's a used car. They're borrowing money. If they're not able to pay the money back, the car gets repossessed. This is happening more and more because people are not being, they're being told that they can afford this. You know, they say, let's say I make $1,000 a month. And I want this car. I have to have a car to get back and forth to work. Let's say I have to have a car to get back and forth to work. Let's say that I make $1,000 a month. They have a brand new Corolla. I'm in a Corolla right now, so I'll use Corolla for example. They have a brand new Corolla for $500 a month. They say, don't worry, you're approved. You can afford $500 a month. Once you add in insurance, which is probably about $200 a month, because it's got to be full coverage in North Carolina, that's $700 a month. That leaves me with $300 a month to survive on. I can't survive on $300 a month. I got kids, man, come on. Kids are expensive. This is what is happening. Maybe not to that extreme extent, but this is what is happening. People are getting forced, not forced, but people are getting into cars that are too expensive for their, for, for their income. And they're getting out of them. And this is costing money for many, many people. Not only is the auto industry doing this, 
but also there are places called like uh, payday payday loans. Um, in North Carolina, there really aren't very many. A lot of these are kind of illegal, but in South Carolina, there's a lot of title loans where you can actually borrow money on the title of your car. And I want to say the interest rate on that is like 84%. 84% interest rate. That is astronomical. That means for every $1 you borrow, you have to pay $1.84. So these are getting people into trouble. So now we have businesses that are borrowing too much money they can't pay back, i.e. Toys R Us. And now we have people that are doing this in the auto industry, buying cars that they can't afford. Does this kind of sound familiar? Huh? Maybe it's a little bit different this time because it's auto industry, but last time it was the housing industry and the, the economy just crashed. It took a nosedive. It even affected me. I lost my job. So, will the economy crash? I really don't know if it will or not, but it's a very good possibility that it could. We're starting to borrow more and more money that we really don't have the means to pay back. Um, is, is it gonna crash? I don't know. I feel like we should have maybe, you know, maybe not legislation against borrowing money, but maybe we should have more rules saying like tighter stipulations maybe. Maybe we should have tighter stipulations. Like, for instance, let's say that you can only finance 10% of your monthly income for an auto vehicle. So that would mean if I have the $1,000 a month, that means I can only pay $100 a month for a vehicle. I don't know. Also, another thing with the auto vehicles, uh, industries are coming up with 84-month interest uh, periods. That is a long time. That means you're in that car for a long time. And you'll probably be upside down in it for a while. All right, I hope it helps. Remember, I'm not an economist, I'm a nurse. Thank you much.